a death stare. So that reproductive, it shows that their reproduction can be very low. Or to make them completely barren when it is time for them to give birth. Say they are giving. Have, have they been able to see drug for cancer? That you are vaccinating children, female children, against cervical, cervical cancer. How many cervical cancer are they be able to heal in Europe or in America? That you are coming to Africa. And people, golly book Africans, just because they believe it's free, government is giving it free. And our leaders too, they are, they are almost forcing people to take it just because of money. I don't know who have caused Africa. Why? It is the devil. They want to re reduce the population of Africa as if they are the one that created the world. God that created the world he has put sufficient material possessions, resources for people to use that can never be exhausted. So, brethren, as a Christian, when you want to be elevated, you need spiritual power. And to have spiritual power, these are things you must do. Number one, like I said in part one, number one, you must give your life to Jesus. You must be a man that has given his spirit, body, and soul to Jesus. That's when Jesus has taken, Jesus is in control of your spirit, body, and soul. Controls where you go, where you talk. Control the way you reason. Number two, you must be a forgiver of sins. You must know how to forgive. You must learn and understand that the, the tone at which you forgive others, that's the proportion as which God will forgive you. To the proportion you forgive your neighbor, that's the proportion God will forgive you also. And you must be aware that everything God will do for you will be on the premise, on the platform of forgiveness. Because all I've seen has have come short of the glory of God. So, if God is going to help you in any way, if God is going to grant you grace in any way, it has to be on the premise of forgiveness. So, you must forgive others. In the part two, as love and giving. The Bible if you must show God that you love him, you must show God that you love him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And love without, because love without, how do you show God you love him? Sacrifice. It's a pity that the church has become so covetous. When we are talking about sacrifice, it's only money, money, money we're talking about. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your vigor. Your energy, your power. You sacrifice your intelligence, your wisdom that God has given to you. You sacrifice your grief, your gift. The gift God has given to you. The talent God has given you. You sacrifice it to the, for the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. Sacrificing your gift shows you love God. Why? That is how God showed us he loved us. He sacrificed his only begotten son to prove to us that he loved us. He said, for God, John 3, 16, for God so loved the, the, the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave only his begotten son. Is that money? Of course, money is included, but we are, the emphasis on money is too much. He sacrificed. Can you sacrifice your time? Can you sacrifice your gifting for God? So many Christians now, if they are quoting for a job, once they hear it, it revolves around a church, they will increase the price. And why? They saw that the, the church leaders have so much money, yet they are suffering. So the, anything they want to do to, with the church, they see it as an avenue. To take what belongs to them too. Church leaders have become very insensitive. 
that we are building buildings that are what B 